Hello children, teachers and parents. My name is George Rosling, the author of The Four, a series of children's books that introduces you to four children from different ethnic backgrounds that become inseparable friends. The books are being transformed into cartoons and you're just about to watch the first one called Friends for Life. During the cartoon, I'd like you to choose your favourite character and follow them throughout the series of books as they learn about each of their friends' cultures and beliefs. They will also be having lots of fun together along with each other's parents and families. So settle down and enjoy the exploits of Agrippa, Audrey, Basharat and Brielle. Enjoy everyone. Goodbye. <laughs> This is the story about the four and how they got to meet each other. There they are, Audrey, Agrippa, Brielle, and Basharat. They are the best friends in the whole world, but it wasn't always like that. Let's start the story from the beginning. The head teacher organized to start a project in the school to help children that were struggling in certain subjects to help them to pass their exams. She selected four students that were the top of their year in different subjects and asked them to meet Miss Lisa Gregory in one of the classrooms, and she would join them as soon as she had finished her morning duties. Fortunately, nobody was injured, but the structures have been damaged and has trapped some of the children inside. We will be okay. I can hear sirens outside. Try to keep calm. I'm not sure how long it will take to get us out of here. <gasps> he is bleeding. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine, thanks. It's only a scratch. When I was younger, I used to think... You would have a different color blood than me. Then I found out that we might be different on the outside, but we are all the same on the inside. Typical girl. Are you children all right in there? Yes, Miss Gregory. We are fine. We will get you out as soon as we can. Just keep calm and try to relax. We will, Miss Gregory. Thank you. Outside the collapsed school building, the fire chief in attendance, Jack Simmons, is talking to the head teacher, Adiva Hussein. We can't get too close until we assess the damage to the building. The last thing we want to do is to make the situation worse and cause any further accidents. How long will it take before we know? We cannot take any risk, so at the moment we can't say, but I will keep you informed. Can you confirm how many people are still inside the building? Yes. We have checked the register and accounted for all the children and staff, with the exception of four children. Are you sure there is definitely nobody else in the building? Yes, I'm positive. They were in the classroom not far from where the Lowry crashed. Miss Gregory is checking on them now. I've just been speaking to the children that are trapped inside, and they are fine. They are all laughing and joking with each other. That's great news. At least we don't have to worry about them panicking. Have their parents been informed? Not yet. We had to make sure we checked everyone was out before we did anything else. Okay, we are going to create a no-go area around the school grounds to keep people away. I will keep a regular check on the children to make sure that they are all right. Good idea. We had to keep monitoring them constantly. Where can we direct the parents to go to when they arrive? Into the space behind the wall on the right. It's far enough away, but close enough for them to see when the children come out. The children are quiet and motionless for a while before Audrey broke the silence. I can remember seeing you three around the school most days, but I don't know your names. Hi, 
I'm Agrippa. And I'm Basharat. My name's Brielle. I'm Audrey. It's nice to meet you. Where are your family from, Agrippa? A place called Burkina Faso in Africa. I was born in this country, but my family still likes to bring me up as an African boy. You're an African boy? Where'd you get a silly name like Agrippa from? That's not a silly name. I've got a silly name. It was from when I was born. It means feet first in African. The other three children look at each other confused. My mom told me that when I was born, I came out upside down. That's why they called me Agrippa. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't a silly name after all. Where does your name come from, Basharat? I've got three older sisters, and my dad always wanted a boy. So when I was born, they called me Basharat, which in our language means good news. Wow, that's cool. What about you, Brielle? Do you know what your name means? I do, yes. My mom told me I was born early, and I was very, very small. My parents didn't think I would survive. They said I was a fighter. And after being in an incubator for two weeks, I pulled through. So my parents called me Brielle, which means God's bravest woman. That's fantastic. So each of our names means something in our own language. What about you, Audrey? Does your name have a meaning? It does, actually. It means noble strength. What is that supposed to mean? I don't honestly know, but it's not as good as your names. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the parents of the four start to arrive at the school. The children are now sitting together on the floor and have been quiet for a few minutes until Audrey again breaks the silence. Are you looking forward to Christmas? We don't celebrate Christmas. It's not an Islamic tradition. We don't celebrate Christmas either. I'm from a Jewish family. Wow, you don't know what you're missing. Christmas celebrations are fantastic. We have times of celebration too, and they are also fantastic. Same here. We also celebrate other times of the year that other religions don't celebrate. So, you two don't believe in God? <laughs> <laughs> of course I believe in God, but in our faith, we worship differently than you. Us too. When we get out of here, why don't we all spend the day at each other's houses and get to understand each of our cultures and beliefs? I think that's a wonderful idea, but will our parents agree to it? I'm not sure. My father can be funny letting others into our house. Mine too. I'm not sure what my dad believes in, as he never talks about it. Do your parents go to church? My parents don't, but I know they believe in God, as I sometimes hear them pray. My mother never misses church on a Sunday. My father goes with her sometimes, but not every week. He was part of a traditional African religion. My parents follow their religious beliefs every day. They are true followers of Allah. I think it will be really interesting to find out about each other's faiths and why we believe in what we believe in. That will be our mission when we finally get out of here. I agree. Me too. And me. Then that's agreed. We have a mission when we get out of here. Why has it taken so long for them to get us out? Maybe they have forgotten about us. Why don't we all shout at once to see if they can hear us? Good idea. After three. One, two, three. Help! Jack was looking at the building when it started to move. It only moved about 12 inches and then stopped abruptly. The parents of the children that had congregated grabbed each other and held tight. Bashrat's father kneeled down to pray. Please don't let anything happen to our children. 
The parents had seen each other around the school for years, but had never batted an eyelash to each other. But now they were united in worry and fear for their children. The other three dads could only watch in despair. Near the building, Jack attracts the attention of one of his colleagues. Before the building moved, we couldn't get into the structure without risking it collapsing. But now the structures look as though they are supporting each other. That will allow it to get in from one side. No way, Jack! Well spotted! Come on, let's do it! The children could hear the emergency crews moving the pieces of the building. When the building had trembled after they screamed, it frightened them and they all started to pray in their own way. Suddenly, a rock moves and the sunlight comes into the classroom. The children all stare at each other and smile. It's amazing what can happen when we all pray to our own God. It looks like the gods heard us at the same time. So whose house is first on our learning trail? It can be mine if you want. Let's sort it out with our parents when we get out. I'm looking forward to it already. I love learning new things. Instead of running to the parents, as you would have expected, the children waited until all four of them were out and then held hands. The children stayed together outside the building and raised their arms aloft. We are free! These children have just been freed after being trapped inside a building for almost five hours. You wouldn't think so, would you? I think you four should be checked over by the ambulance crew. There is only Agrippa that has a graze on his leg. Yes, that's right. The rest of us are fine. Better to be safe than sorry. I can't believe you were all so brave. Absolutely right. I couldn't believe it when you all came out smiling. We are friends for life. Would you like to tell your parents what we were talking about, Brielle? Brielle explained what they had been talking about inside of the building and told them that she wanted to be the first to invite her new friends to their home. Her parents agreed and nodded with approval. All the other parents also agreed to welcome their child's new friends into their house. They exchanged addresses and numbers and decided that the order of visits would be Brielle, then Basharat, followed by Audrey, and then Agrippa. The children were checked over by the paramedics before they were finally allowed to leave the school. Everyone was fine apart from Agrippa, who left with a bandage on his grazed leg. Brielle's house is set up to look exactly as it would be for the celebration of Shabbat, a day of joy and rest. Her father comes to the door with the other children, and Brielle greets her guests as they walk into the house. Shabbat starts at sunset on Friday and lasts until after sunset on Saturday. Brielle takes her friends on a tour of the house to show them where everything is, including her toilet, in case they have to go. She shows them the candles and the candle holders that are on the mantelpiece, as well as the other things relating to Shabbat. Brielle guided her friends through the routines followed at the beginning of Shabbat. Her mother lights the candles and gave thanks to God, while her father, who was dressed casually with his kippah, gave blessings from the Bible. Brielle told her friends about the Shabbat and what the family did at this time, which included not using any electricity and playing chess and other board games in candlelight. The children are sitting on the carpet in front of the fireplace. They open their eyes wide as they listen. Brielle also tells them about other festivals. The first was Hanukkah, the Jewish winter festival of light where they give presents to family members and friends. This lasts for eight days and a candle is lit each day. Next was Sukkot a Jewish harvest festival that lasts for a week and meals are eaten in a shelter made and decorated with leaves, branches, fruit, and pictures. Then Purim, the Jewish carnival festival at the end of the winter where they have fancy dress parties and perform plays. Presents are given especially to people that are too old or ill to leave their homes. Next, the Passover a Jewish spring festival of freedom held at home where all the members of the family eat a special meal and play games. They also tell stories and sing songs together. She also told them about her own coming-of-age ceremony known as Bat Mitzah. This would take place when she was 12 years old, in four years' time. She explained about kosher foods that were eaten by the Jewish community and explained that they only ate meat from certain animals, fish, or birds. Just when she was finishing, her mother shouted to let her know that the food was ready to be served. 
Brill's mom brought the food to the table and laid it out so that the children could help themselves. They had braided challah bread, spicy pizargan, meat stuffed kiba, a baked couscous royale, and a juicy brisket for main course, followed by dairy-free flourless chocolate cake, jelly-filled sufganyot, and a chocolate ragalak for afters. We see the four children sitting at a table. There are dishes with delicious food on them. The children eat almost everything on the table. They had learned a lot about the Jewish culture and enjoyed every minute of it. Brielle's father took them home around 8 p.m. Can you please take off your shoes before you enter the house? And when you step over the doorway, can you put your right foot first? Bashrat explained that it was all part of Islamic etiquette and custom and asked them that when they took their shoes off, to take them off their left foot first, and when they put them back on, to put the right shoe on first. I hope I don't get too confused. Don't worry, I will be here to remind you. What are you wearing, Basharat? This is a thobe. It is my traditional form of dress. Islamic law says we must wear clothing that covers from the navel to the knee. Muslim women must cover themselves from head to toe with the exception of their hands and face. We worship our God, Allah, in a mosque which has a large dome on the top of the building with a tower known as a minaret. I've seen mosques when I've been in my dad's car. Yes, me too. I've also seen a mosque. On entering the mosque, you have to take off your shoes and wash your hands, face, arms, head, ears, and finally your feet before praying to Allah. We don't use paper towels to dry ourselves, as it's not hygienic. Bashrat also explained that when they pray, they must face towards Mecca, the holy city of Islam. The prayers are normally led in a mosque by an imam and last for approximately 10 minutes. He also told his friends that men and women pray separately and the women worship in different parts of the mosque. There are also Quran schools where children learn to read from the Quran, which is the written scripture which is beautifully decorated and written in Arabic. Even at home, they need to remove their shoes and wash before prayers. They have four positions to pray, which are standing, kneeling, bowing, and having their hands on the floor and their heads on the ground. There are five things that a Muslim must do in their lifetime. Say there is no God but Allah. Pray five times a day, give money to the poor, go without food during light hours on Ramadan, visit Mecca, the holy city. Basrat was finishing his lecture on his religion when his mother called to tell him the food was ready. The feast looked magnificent, and Basrat asked his friends to repeat his traditional word of Bismillah, which means, in the name of Allah. There was nan breads and papadums with different sauces and dips to start. Then there was chicken biryani, beta roti, garlic mustard fish filet, and chicken masala for main course. This was finished off with Ladies Delight with cream, Mahamabia strawberries cake, and raspberry yogurt ice cream. The children looked for some cutlery, but didn't see any. We eat and drink using our right hand. If you would prefer to use cutlery, then let me know, please. There is enough to feed an army, but I'm sure we'll manage. After they had finished all they could eat, they washed their hands and face before playing some board games. The clock on Basharat's wall was showing just after 8 p.m. when the children thanked his mom and waved goodbye on the way out. It is now Audrey's turn to entertain her friends and show them her religious beliefs. She was feeling really nervous as she had all weekend to think about it as her friends were coming on Monday afternoon. She escorted her friends into her living room where there was a framed cross on the wall alongside some rosary beads. She then asked her friends to sit down while she pressed play on her CD player. Audrey sang a well-known hymn in the Catholic faith known as Ave Maria, and she sang it so beautifully it brought tears to the other children's eyes. Audrey explains to her friends that she is a devout Catholic and that she believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that the Holy Bible is the inspired, error-free, and revealed Word of God. She tells them that her parents are not practicing Christians, but they do believe in God, but are not followers of the faith. I attend the Catholic Church every Sunday and believe that the Pope, who resides in Rome, is the successor to St. Peter, whom Jesus appointed to be the first head of the Church. As a Catholic, 
You are required to live a Christian life, pray daily, participate in sacraments, obey the moral law, and accept the teachings of Christ and his church. The minimum requirements are to attend Mass every Sunday. Audrey explains that she attends church with her grandparents, as they are practicing Christians. They believe in the birth of Christ as being a miracle to the Virgin Mary, his mother, and celebrate his birth at Christmas by giving and receiving presents with friends and family. Another time of major celebration which symbolizes Jesus Christ's resurrection on the third day after his crucifixion is at Easter. This was when Mary Magdalene had gone to the tomb where Jesus was laid and found it empty. She was told that he had risen. Easter eggs are used as gifts to celebrate this occasion, and some children even decorate boiled eggs and roll them down the hill as part of the celebration. Audrey shows the children some painted boiled eggs that she prepared over the weekend. They look at these while Audrey carries on with her explanation. Audrey then escorts the children to the dining room table. Christians believe that Jesus gave his life to enable us to eat and drink whatever we want, so there are no restrictions on what food we eat. But my mom has made sure that what we are having suits everybody's tastes. On the table, there are many dishes. Audrey's mother places the dishes on the table so the children can help themselves. For starters, they have tomato soup with crusty bread or pate on toast. Main courses consisted of roast beef, roast chicken, or cod. There was vegetables or cauliflower, cabbage, green beans, peas, carrots, and a great big bowl of chips. For pudding, they had apple pie, chocolate gato, strawberries, ice cream, and custard. It was an unusual mixture of food, but as before, the children get stuck in and finish most of what was put in front of them. The children were then sat on the floor in the lounge playing games and laughing after the boys attempted to cheat at cards, but the girls caught them out. It was almost 8.30 p.m. when Audrey's dad took the other children home as Audrey waved goodbye from the front door. Last to welcome their friends is Agrippa. His father wasn't exactly over-enthusiastic about welcoming strangers into his home, but his wife tells him that it is for his son he is doing it and not for himself. Also, that the other children's parents had welcomed Agrippa into their home with open arms. So he finally agreed and set off to pick up his son's friends. Agrippa is waiting at the door. He is wearing the traditional boy's dashiki outfit. He welcomes the children into his home and takes them into his bedroom to explain to them what his understanding is about his religion. My family believes in an African traditional religion, which can be different to each family or tribe back in Africa itself. Their traditional beliefs are in their being a supreme creator who could be any of the gods his friends believed in. They also believe in spirits who could be ancestors from the past, and they believe in black magic and in the use of traditional medicines. He explained that they also believe that their ancestors have direct communication with God and send messages to him via the divinities who are the link between the ancestors and the living. Agrippa shows his father's ceremonial mask to his friends, and it looks quite scary. It was used to protect him against bad spirits and to bring wealth and good harvest. Agrippa then shows them photographs of when he went to a ceremony with his father in Africa, and he had all of his body painted like a skeleton, including his face. He also showed them his father's set of drums. He tells them that the drums were made out of antelope skins, and the noise sounded like a leopard snarl when you scraped powder across the drum skin with a drumstick. Agrippa held the drum in his hand, and just as he was about to try to play it, his mother popped her head around the door. Are you children ready to eat? Yes, yes please. Wash your hands first, please, children. The table was loaded with all sorts of lovely food. All the children looked at the dishes on the table. For starters, the main course they were given the choice of fricadelle, mandazi, samosa, shishtauk, sosity, and ventkuk. Then for pudding, they had the luxury of helping themselves to malva pudding, guava ice cream, and milk tart. When they had eaten as much as they could, they were full to the brim. After washing their hands and faces, they went back into the dining room to have another look at the mask and the drums. The clock was showing 8 p.m. and the children gathered around the front door. Did you enjoy yourselves? Yes, that was excellent. It was indeed. Can we all do it again sometime? Too much of a good thing takes the excitement away. Maybe we should do something different next time. Like what? Adventures! Why don't we go on some adventures together? One thing I've always wanted to do is to go to the safari park. For me, I would go camping. Oh, no. Think of all the bugs. <laughs> <laughs> We've got plenty of time to plan ahead before the next holidays. 
We will decide what to do then. The four go on an adventure. I can't wait. Friends for life, friends for life, we fool friends for life, friends for life, friends for life, we rule friends. Friends for life, friends for life, we fool friends for life, friends for life, friends for life, we rule friends. We rule friends.